Thursday, Bob sat at the table and looked at his bottle of Miller Lite. He had only bought a six-pack because if things went wrong in the next few minutes, he didn't want to have enough beer to get drunk. He heard her music stop upstairs, so he knew she was about done getting ready. Normally, he worked late on Thursdays because it was his wife's girl's night out with her friends. His parents would watch their daughter, Casey, while his wife went and had a few drinks with her female co-workers. He would finish up the week's paperwork so he could scoot out early on Friday and have more time with his family. It was actually a great arrangement. He got some control over his busy schedule, his parents got some time to spoil their five-year-old grandchild, and his wife got some personal time to relax and commiserate with friends. At least, that was what he had thought. As he heard her moving around upstairs in the bathroom, he thought back to the lunch he had with Vicky last Tuesday. Tuesday, I got to get out of the shop more, he thought, or at least see if they would deliver these sandwiches because they are amazing. He had taken a seat so he could watch the door and soon saw a familiar figure step into the restaurant. He noticed her looking around, so he stood up a bit and waved his arm. She saw him and started walking in his direction. At 31 years old, Vicky was the oldest of the friends his wife went out with. She was also his favorite and the only one who was married. She had a way about her that put everyone at ease without being the doormat of the group. He had to admit she was pretty good-looking, also with her dark wavy hair and white complexion. No jugs to speak of at all, but she had a really beautiful face and legs that went all the way up. Her husband Ron thought she hung the moon, and the feeling was reciprocated. She still got her share of male attention. As she pulled up a chair and sat down across from him, she said, Thank you for meeting me, Bob. I know how busy you are at work, and taking this time out can't have been easy. She looked intently at his face. Ah, no problem, V. Bob said, although I have to tell you I feel a little uncomfortable meeting you here without Sharon. I don't make it a point to have lunch with pretty ladies that I am not hitched to, but you said it was about Sharon, so I'm all ears. I am guessing you want to surprise her for her birthday next month. He was not expecting to see the sad look on her face when he mentioned having lunch with her. He was also surprised to see her face fall more when he mentioned Sharon's birthday. What's up? Bob asked. I know you and Sharon love each other, and I have seen you together enough to know that what you guys have is special. So it is only because of this that I am coming to you. This may end up ruining my friendship with her, but if you can save your marriage, I'm okay with it. There is no easy way to say this, but Sharon has been seeing someone for the last three months. Bob was shocked. This must be a joke, a bad joke, he told Vicky. I am so sorry, Bob, but it is not a joke. About two months ago, after you picked up this project you were working on, Sharon was in a funk at work. She was grumpy, and when we went out, she was even quieter than usual. After a few martinis, we were able to pull out of her that she was missing you and feeling abandoned. She also started talking about how she felt you two were just a middle-aged married couple who were letting life pass you by. At this point, the waiter stopped by to take Vicky's order. She ordered a cob salad along with an iced tea with lemon. Bob was still reeling from the idea that his wife would be sneaking around. Over the eight years they had been together, he would have bet his life that Sharon would have told him if she was unhappy. He thought they had always been honest about their feelings, even when they knew the other would disagree. He looked at Vicky and asked the question he needed to know the answer to immediately. Has she screwed him? He whispered. No, at least not that I know of, and I think I would be able to tell. Believe it or not, your wife is a pretty open person. That is why I am shocked by how she is acting. Bob, you have to know that every woman I have talked to has said these same things. I figure it is almost how you guys always complain about being dragged down by the ball and chain, or whatever terms you use amongst yourselves. When she started talking about this, we all commiserated and told her the same things. He's a hell of a catch. You should pay more attention to her, yada yada. Unfortunately, that night my sister was there. What does your sister have to do with anything? Bob asked, fighting down some anger. 
Frankly, my sister is a... Well, let's just say she's not the most morally sound person, Vicky replied. The waiter that brought her tea raised an eyebrow as he overheard her comment. Vicky took a sip, then continued, My parents were serial cheaters. I have no idea who cheated first, but they were always looking to get revenge on the other. When I was seventeen, I asked them why they bothered staying together, and they looked at me like I was from another planet. They told me they loved each other, and that is all that mattered. This affected my sister and me differently. I felt like cheating was the best way to ruin a happy relationship, and my sister felt that cheating was fine as long as you loved each other. I love my sister, but she is such an idiot about things. Anyways, back to the story. My sister Jerry made the comment that if she wasn't getting romance at home, maybe she should try finding it somewhere else. I told Jerry she was wrong, but Hannah and Gail started talking about the best way to pick up a guy and how to keep it secret. I think for those two, it was purely an academic conversation, especially since they aren't married. At the time, Sharon said she would never go behind your back, but I think my dumbass sister planted a seed in your wife's head. Why do you think that? Bob asked. Now that he wasn't sure she had slept around, he was beginning to process more information. None of this was fun to hear, but he had always believed that knowledge was power. Because the next week, Luke Jonas and his crew showed up at the Red Horse Saloon where we were drinking. Sharon says she didn't invite him, but she did mention to him that we were going to try line dancing that night. It was actually kind of fun having more people try something new, and it would have been great except for Luke. Now he had a name. Knowledge is power. Tell me about this, Luke, Bob growled. Vicky smiled a little at the tone of Bob's voice. She continued, Luke Jonas is the company Romeo. He takes a run at every female, and any who give him the slightest interest find themselves the recipient of his charms. He doesn't care if they are married or even if they are particularly good-looking. He just likes the chase. Your wife shot him down early on, and he never pushed until that night. Now he is chasing your wife, and she is running instead of standing her ground and putting a stop to it. It is an open secret that if Luke gets any more charges of harassment brought against him, he is fired. She could end his advances, and she isn't. In fact, they have been regular seatmates at the cafeteria for the last couple of months, whispering and giggling. I have tried talking to her about this, but she just gets angry and tells me they are friends and that Luke listens to her and understands her problems. I asked her if she would act like this if you were sitting across the table, and she had the decency to blush. Then she got mad and said something to the effect that you wouldn't even notice. After that, I backed off and decided to keep an eye on her. They seemed to cool it off at work, and I thought that things had run their course until three weeks ago. Vicky's lunch came at this point, and she started eating it while looking at Bob for a reaction. Bob took a long drink of his lemonade, but didn't taste it at all. His chest cavity felt empty, and his eyes didn't want to focus. He was wondering how she could think that he wouldn't care about her flirting with another man. He knew he had never been overly jealous, but that was because he loved and trusted his wife. As for not noticing her, he wondered if he had been that distant. With this work project, it was going to be a huge payoff, but maybe he had taken it too far. He wondered what had happened three weeks ago. Did he really want to know? They ate in silence for the next five minutes or so while he tried to process what she had told him. He was angry no doubt. There was no reason for her to be so tight with another man, but he could almost see her logic. If he had been more attentive, then maybe this whole thing wouldn't have happened. Also, other than not telling him about being so flirty with this guy, she hadn't actually lied to him. Lies of omission, sure enough, but so far he could overlook her behavior and work to fix this. He would talk to her and get her side of the story as long as she was honest and agreed to stay away from that jerk, they could move on. So far, he didn't see any lasting damage done unless something happened within the last three weeks. So, tell me about three weeks ago. How bad is it? 
He was back on some solid mental ground. He had his feet under him. He could work with this. She looked at him with sympathy. This is where it gets rough, Bob. Three weeks ago, we all ended up at the Red Horse Saloon again for line dancing. Luke and his boy showed up, and we were all dancing together and having a good time. Sharon had been drinking a little more than she usually does. Luke had been buying her drinks all night and was getting quite tipsy. I went to the bathroom with her, and she was more out of it than I realized. When she came out of the bathroom stall, she had her panties in her hand and put them in her purse. I asked her what that was about, and she said she wanted to feel free. Well, she was almost drunk, so I chalked it up to the alcohol and helped her back to our table. I started rounding up Hannah and Gail to take Sharon back to my house so she wouldn't come home too drunk when I noticed that Sharon and Luke were bumping and grinding on the dance floor. The line dancing was done, and it was just a jukebox for the rest of the night. I saw her panties in her hand, and she put them in Luke's pocket as the song ended. Unfortunately, so did everyone else. There were catcalls from all over the bar, and Luke was grinning like a Cheshire cat. Then he went and gave her an almost deep kiss. One of his friends was holding up a cell phone. I wanted so bad for her to stop him or something, but she just went along with it. Oh, Bob, I am so sorry. She stopped as she saw his reaction. His jaw was literally hanging open. He had to get out of here. Excuse me for a second. Bathroom. He stuttered as he got up and walked away. He went inside and locked the door behind him. He splashed some water on his face and gripped the sink as hard as he could. He remembered the night she was talking about. Sharon usually got home around 11.30, but that night it was almost 2.30 when she came in. Vicky had called and told him that she was staying at her place for a while because she had had too much to drink. She would call a cab for Sharon when she was more sober. This had happened a few times before, and Bob had always been relieved that Vicky and the girls were so responsible about not getting a DUI. He always thought that getting a little blitzed was part of the fun of going out and cutting loose. He honestly wasn't mad about it. He also remembered what happened that night when she got home. He remembered being woken up to the warm sensation of Sharon's lips on his. This whole thing had taken him by surprise, and before he knew it. Oh my God, honey. That was incredible, he said. I am sorry it was over so soon, but please let me make it up to you. Let's see what you got. As she stood up, he grabbed her head and gave her the deepest tongue kiss he could. He tasted some booze and a little bit of himself, but he was not grossed out at all. After her performance, the least she deserved was a kiss. He broke their lip lock and started kissing the crook of her neck. She always giggled and squirmed when he would do that. He traced her collar down to between her jugs. He had heard that some women had really sensitive, but Sharon was not one of those. That was fine with him, though, because after eight years together, he had found a few other places on her body that would excite her. He let his tongue drift slowly all the way down through her narrow strip of hair and between her swollen lips. He pushed her onto the bed. Please, baby, make love to me he said. He could feel her body tensing up. He wanted to warn her about waking their daughter. That was fantastic. Oh my God, baby, I haven't felt that good in a while. She stopped talking after that, and they engaged in some of the hottest wrestling they ever had. I taste pretty good, don't I? She said as she broke from their kiss. Sweetest thing ever, baby, he replied. But don't think we are done. You started something that I now have to finish. He smiled. This was turning into the best night ever. Screw me, lover, she growled as she looked at him with lust-filled eyes. Tonight, he had a beautiful woman who wanted him to take her. They both had an amazing time. He snapped back to the present. Now he was shaking with rage as he felt that she got all worked up over her boyfriend and came home to take it out on him. Dan, he thought. What if she was thinking of him while we were having sex? He splashed more water on his face, dried himself off, and went back outside. As he sat down, 
He saw a look of sympathy on Vicky's face, but had no idea how to respond. His sandwich was forgotten on the table. What else do I need to know, Vicky? He asked. Honestly, Bob, that is about all there is. The last couple of girls' nights have been at Hannah's house with wine and lingerie parties. At work, Sharon has been acting very cool towards Luke, even though he has been really sniffing around her. I had thought that it was done, but just yesterday I saw them talking. They shut up when I came around the corner, so I have no idea what they are up to, but I am done with it. I figured you need to know, and maybe you can do something since she is not listening to her friends anymore. The waiter came to bring us our check. He grabbed it before she could touch it and started fishing out his credit card. I want to see these guys in action together and maybe scare them straight, he said. Sharon says you guys are going to the Red Horse Saloon this week, so this Thursday when you guys go, I am going to show up and observe from across the room. He stopped talking abruptly as he noticed the horrified look on Vicky's face. What did I say wrong? He asked. Bob, Hannah has a doctor's appointment early in the morning Friday, and Gail is going to see her brother in Florida. If Sharon is going out Thursday, it isn't with us. She reached across the table and grabbed my hand. I am so sorry, honey, she said sadly. I know better than to ask if you are okay. But here is my home phone number. Call any time to talk to Ron or me. Her husband was a marriage counselor by trade so talking to him could potentially be helpful. Thank you for telling me, Vicky. I know it must have been difficult for you, but I really think you are being a good person and a good friend. I don't know what is going to happen going forward, but now I know what is going on, and I can take some action. Thank you again. As he thanked her, he stood up to leave, signing the credit card bill and walking out. Wednesday, today was a breakthrough on the project Bob had been working on. They had been able to secure pre-manufactured parts from a startup company in Harrisburg that would shave two months off the turnaround time, which still gave them at least a week's cushion, even with spotty transport logistics. Two more phone calls, and this plan would be done two months ahead and save the military millions. The cash bonus would be as huge as Bob had thought it would be, and the recognition that having his name on the project would bring would be nice. He should be as happy as the proverbial clam. Instead, he was thinking about how much he didn't want to go home and do what he figured he had to. He had decided to see what he could find out on his own about this affair. He couldn't access her work email, but he didn't think they would put anything on there since it was monitored. However, he did log into her Yahoo Mail account and found nothing. She could have made a separate account, but he would have no way of knowing that until he got on their home computer. Part of the problem was that Bob knew he wasn't very tech-savvy. The idea of buying surveillance cameras or rigging his house with voice-activated microphones sounded cool in theory, but he already had a plan in place for confronting her. All he wanted was as much information as he could get to know how far he would have to go to try and save or try to scuttle his marriage. Sharon had already picked up their daughter Casey from his parents and had conned him into bringing Chinese home. When he sent her the text asking what she wanted, she replied, After ten years together and eight of those married, you should know what I like, babe. He couldn't resist the dig in his reply. I just wanted to make sure you were still happy with the status quo. His phone dinged back. You are right. Get me an extra egg roll. If it weren't for the bombshell dropped yesterday, he would have been so happy to come home an hour early and just spend time with his wife and kid. When he looked at his clock, however, he reminded himself that before the project began, this time would have been considered two hours late. He also realized that he hadn't been home early with his family on a Friday since this had started. Add to that the being tired and stressed even when he was home, it was easy to see how Sharon could feel neglected. Not that she had any right to do what she was doing. Walking through the front door, he saw his wife reaching up for a wine bottle. He stood there and just admired her form. At 31, she was a woman in her prime. Her 5 seven frame had just enough curves to be mouth-watering. He had a great view of her tight bum, even apparent through the bulky sweatpants she was wearing. 
She had her hair pulled back in a ponytail, and when she turned around and hit him with that million-dollar smile, he couldn't help but think how damn lucky he was to be with her. Then he remembered. I am so glad you were home, babe. How was work? She walked over to give him a nice kiss on the lips. Pretty good. We had a major breakthrough on some supplies, so we are probably going to be done at least a month ahead of schedule, maybe. I know I have been out of it with this project. I also know that it sucks that I can't talk specifics with you about it due to the fact that it is classified. I just want you to know that you and Casey are the most important things in my life, and I will do everything in my power to protect us as long as I can. He said, looking into her eyes, did he see a flash of regret or guilt, or was he just looking for something? This was one of those days he cursed not being able to read people. He was often labeled a straight shooter. He tended to speak plainly and directly and expected others to do the same. He knew he could initially come off as abrasive, but when people got to see that he meant what he said and that he would be upfront about things, they actually liked him. His technique had worked for him for his 34 years, and he saw very little reason to change until now. Oh, honey, she replied, we both love you to death and understand. I will admit I wish you could be plugged into the family a bit more. I get that this is only temporary. It does make me feel so good to hear you acknowledge the fact. Though, she almost looked like she had tears forming in her eyes. Was she really this good of an actress? So, can you tell me what getting the project done early means for you? She asked as she started pulling the food containers from the back. Well, first and foremost, it means a very significant pay bonus. I don't know how much until the project gets greenlit, but we are not talking chump change. Then there is the fact that handling our first government project and being so damn good at it should get the company more work. My name being lead will also get some government-type headhunters looking to scoop me up. The bosses know this, so I should be able to leverage some pretty good stuff out of them. Assuming everything goes the way it should, he said. As he was talking, he tried to eat his sweet and sour pork with chopsticks, but it always took too long, so he grabbed a fork. Haven't I told you all this already? He asked her around a chunk of pork. Not that I remember, babe, she replied. All I remember you saying was that you were going to be taking on a big contract that you couldn't talk about, but it should be worth it. Then it seems I haven't really talked to you since then. She looked kind of sad, but perked up. But it looks like I will have my husband back soon. He looked at her. Time to do a little fishing. So what bar are you ladies hitting up tomorrow night? Should I stop by after work and make sure you all are good to drive home? He asked with what he hoped was a light tone. Oh, um, actually, we decided to hit the Red Horse Saloon for some line dancing but I think we will be done before you get off work. She looked down at her orange chicken as she said this. His heart broke. Casey chose that time to be done with her egg roll and asked him to read her stories. He picked up his plate and rinsed it off in the sink, then grabbed her up and took her to the living room. For the next hour, he doted on his child, reading story after story until she was fast asleep. He heard snoring from the sofa and saw his beautiful wife curl up with her own book dropped in her lap. He picked up his daughter and walked her upstairs to her bedroom. He put her into her bed and tucked her in. His eyes started filling up with tears as he thought about what the next days were going to bring. He wanted her to remember these good nights with her mother and father and not the rough nights that were likely on the horizon. Wiping away his tears, he walked back downstairs to the couch where his wife was asleep. He kissed her lips gently and pulled a blanket up over her so she wouldn't get cold. Then he went looking for her phone. He found it plugged into the wall on the nightstand in their room. He swiped up, left, and right to unlock it, and started looking through her texts. It didn't take long to find what he was looking for. Scrolling back, he saw they started about three months ago. Hey, pretty lady, it was fun seeing you girls out dancing last night. Same here. Bob works late on Thursdays, and the in-laws wash the rugrat so we can have girl time. 
Your hubby is a good guy, letting you get out of the house every once in a while. Yes, he is great. For the next few weeks, all the texts were pretty harmless. Then this exchange. Vicky read me the riot act today about our lunch breaks. I was pissed, but she has a good point. I don't want people to get the wrong idea about us. It is just harmless talking. We aren't doing anything wrong. She asked if Bob would be okay with how we were acting, and that made me think that we are maybe sending out the wrong vibe. Besides, I don't need to be sharing all my problems with another guy. I am going to try to talk to Bob. I understand, but if you can't get his attention, you know where to find me. I will even buy you dinner if needed, just as friends. Bob didn't remember her trying to talk to him about anything, but that also could have been the time that he found out they needed what was essentially food-grade stainless steel for the application. He spent days trying to track down a supplier that could manufacture the quantities they needed. During that time, you probably could have dropped a bomb on him, and he wouldn't have noticed. So far, all the texts were harmless from her end. He figured it was pretty obvious that Jackus was playing her, though. How could she not see this? He scrolled down to see the next set of texts. You need to give those back today. What are you talking about, smiley face? You know damn good and well. My friends are so pissed at me right now, and I don't blame them. If Bob finds out how much of a 304 I was acting like, he may leave me. So, you don't want me to show him the video, smiley face. What video? You can't let anyone at work see that. San was there. And he took a video on his phone. I will make sure he deletes it. You will owe me, though, smiley face. Fine. I can't lose Bob, not after last night. What happened last night? It is really none of your business. Was he pissed off you got home late and drunk, lol? Oh hell no, let's just say there was some serious world rocking going on and leave it at that, smiley face. So, some dirty dancing with me got you all worked up for your hubby, huh? You should be thanking me, smiley face. You were being a jerk. Last night was off the charts, and it was because Bob and I love each other. Now give me my panties back, and make sure that Dan video gets erased. That sentence makes me sound like such a 304. Bob deserves better than me. No, he is lucky to have you. He wasn't there to keep an eye on you, was he? I'm sure he is a great guy, but you go out by yourself a lot. I don't need anyone to keep an eye on me. Just be the friend you claim you are, and take care of what I ask, please. Sorry, of course I will help you. And then I'll let you buy me dinner, smiley face. Just make sure no one sees that video, and I will do whatever you want. Nothing until last Monday. I heard ladies' night was cancelled. How about that dinner, smiley face? Not a good idea. So sorry. Oh, come on. Huddy is going to be at work, and the girls are leaving you alone. One night out with a friend, and we can chat about stuff like we used to in the cafeteria. Besides, you owe me, smiley face. Fine, I will meet you at the Red Horse at 8. Nope, smiley face. Meet me at the TGI Fridays in the Sharon Hotel. They have great drink specials, and I don't want to be yelling over a bunch of drunken idiots. I will be getting a room in case we drink too much. Fine, but this is just a couple of friends having dinner, and I do owe you for making sure that video never got out. Got it? It's bad enough that people from work heard about it. Don't worry about it. I watched Sam delete the video, and soon someone else will do something scandalous, and you will be fine. See you at eight. There it was, probably the end of a marriage. How many times do you see your wife accept a date with another man at a restaurant or bar in a hotel? How can this possibly go well? How could she possibly think that sex wasn't on the table? He closed out the text messages and plugged the phone back on the charger. He got undressed and slid into the bed alone. Sleep was a long time coming. Thursday, she came down the stairs wearing her little black dress that she always wore when they would go out on their dates. She looked beautiful. 
She stopped at the bottom of the stairs as she saw him sitting at the table. Oh, Bob, I didn't expect you home this early today, babe. She looked kind of pale. We need to talk, Sharon, he said with almost no emotion in his voice. This is probably the most important talk we will ever have. Please have a seat. She sat down. She looked scared. She went to hold his hand like they would normally do, but he pulled it away. I know that there is no girl night out. I know that you have been seeing Luke Jonas behind my back, he started. Bob, please let me explain. She was cut off abruptly by him slamming the table with his fist. Damn it, Sharon, listen to me, he yelled. You don't get to talk until I have said my piece. She cowered back and started to cry. He looked impassively at her and continued. As I was saying, I know you have been cuddling with this Luke at lunch. I know you have been dancing with him at the Red Horse Saloon. I know you took your panties off and gave them to him after some sexy bump and grinding on the dance floor. I know the only reason you jumped me three weeks ago was because you were all worked up over him. I also know that you were going on a date with him tonight at a restaurant in a hotel where your boyfriend will have a room ready. I don't know if you have slept with him or given him a blowjob yet. I am not sure what would have stopped you if you haven't. He paused, trying to get his anger under control. Sharon, you lied by omission to me about Luke. You lied by omission to me about your pantyless dancing, and you lied to me about going out with the girls. Frankly, I am tired, and my trust in you is broken. I am not sure I even want to work on this marriage anymore. Your actions make me think you don't care about this marriage anymore. So, I will give you three choices. He held up a finger. Choice one. You walk out that door and go see your a whole boyfriend. Even if you don't sleep together tonight, this choice will end our marriage. Zero chance of me wanting to save it. He held up a second finger. Choice two, you and I sit here all night and you try to convince me to work on staying married to you. You will have a hard sell because I am not inclined to trust a single word out of your mouth. However, you might be able to do it because I do love you and we have a child to think about. I would say you have a 50% chance of me working to save this. He held up a third finger. Choice three. You take me to see your Romeo tonight. You tell him to never talk or contact you again in front of me. Then you let me and him talk for at least 15 minutes out of earshot. This choice will gain you the most respect and will also go the farthest towards making me want to work on us. If you haven't slept with or performed or received oral sex with him, I promise I will be 100% in as far as making this relationship work. Also note, if you have slept with or performed or received sex with him, this is the only option that might possibly allow for us to work out. She looked like she was about to throw up and was staring at him in what could only be described as horror. Zero, fifty, or one hundred. Sharon, what is it going to be? he asked. The question hung in the air for almost a minute. It looked like his wife was trying not to vomit when she looked up at him. Bob, I am so sorry about everything, and I desperately need to talk to you. In answer to your question, though, do you want to drive, or do you want me to? Well, that was unexpected. He really did think she would walk out on them to love her boy. He thought for sure she would sit there all night trying to make excuses for her behavior. Bringing him to see her a whole really did win her some points. She was still in the red, though. He picked up his keys and followed her out to his car. He opened the door for her out of force of habit, and she almost started to cry. As he was pulling out of the driveway, she looked over at him. I really screwed us up, didn't I? She asked in a small voice. Yes, Sharon, you really did, he replied, keeping his eyes on the road. What can I do to fix it? She asked. He thought for a bit. He had a couple plans he was formulating. Well, first thing, complete honesty from here on out. I shouldn't have to say this. But apparently you think it is okay to not mention things I should know or out and out lie to me. Along with that, you are going to have to find a way to make me believe what you are saying. I don't know how you plan to do that. But frankly, I am not the one who ruined our trust. 
Another thing I don't feel I should have to mention, but I'm going to, he is dead to you if we stay together. You do not talk to him during work. You do not ask him how his date is going. If he shows up at a bar you are at, you leave. If you cannot leave, you call me immediately. You do not accept drinks or gifts from him, no matter what he says. He receives no interaction from you. Next thing, when we get back from tonight, you are going to tell me everything, even stuff you don't think I want to hear. I understand that I have been consumed by this project, so I will take some blame. If you have hard feelings for me, then let me know. And the last thing for now, plan on making time for marriage counseling sessions. If you want to pick the counselor, feel free to do so. Maybe Ron can suggest someone. This is contingent upon certain information, however. As he finished talking, her phone beeped that she had a text. She looked down and got even more pale. It's him. He is wondering where I am, she said softly. He held out his hand for her phone. Wordlessly, she passed it to him. He scrolled back through her texts. There were a couple new ones from earlier today. Hey, I got a room with a jacuzzi. Maybe after dinner we can relax. Bring your bikini, smiley face. You are not going to be able to get me drunk enough to get into a hot tub with you. I am not bringing a bikini. We will have to see. You know how you get when you are drunk. Maybe you won't need a bikini, winky face. And then just now, where are you at? I got a glass of wine waiting for you. He texted back, running a little late. I got a surprise for you. You brought your bikini. Excellent. He handed the phone back to his wife. She read the texts and just hung her head. You know he is not helping your cause, right? Just the text from today makes it sound like you were going to hook up with him tonight. How bad will it look if I scroll back farther? He said. Of course, he knew exactly how bad it looked. I guess I should ask. Do you think that your text messages today were inappropriate flirting? Can you see how these exchanges have killed all the trust I have in you? He heard her sob. Bob, I swear I only planned on having dinner tonight. I never planned to sleep with him. He couldn't help it. He looked at her like she was an idiot. Did you plan on giving him your panties after getting wasted and bumping and grinding with him a few weeks ago? He didn't think it was possible for her to get any more pale. He was wrong. Sharon, we are almost there. You should probably do something with your makeup and think about what you are going to say to Luke. Oh, and don't drink the wine. She pulled the visor down and got a tissue from the glove box. She started pulling herself together and stopped sobbing. As she started putting on her mascara, she asked in a more normal tone of voice. Bob, I can see why you think Luke was playing me. Hearing you talk about it makes me think he was. But Bob, how could I have not seen it? I know my recent decisions don't show it, but I am not a dumb little girl. I have fended off better looking and more sophisticated guys than Luke. So why did he get to me? That right there is one of the reasons I have a tough time believing anything you say, Sharon. You are a beautiful, intelligent woman who should be able to see this for what it is. That is why I have to wonder if you were going along with it willingly, he replied. Add to that the fact that you were at a bar with this guy and lied to me about going to dinner with him tonight. No wonder you were so angry and hurt. Her color looked to be coming back, and her voice got a little stronger. Okay, I screwed this up, and now I have to find a way to fix it. Thank you for giving me a chance. She wanted to give him a kiss, but he turned his head at the last minute and let it land on his cheek. I am still not over this, not by a long shot. She looked at him almost in shock. They were normally pretty affectionate. I hope we can get back to that. What do you want me to say to him? She asked as they turned into the parking lot of the restaurant. He found a parking spot and killed the engine after pulling in. He looked over at her and let some of his anger boil over. What do I want you to say, Sharon? Our relationship is on life support here because of your actions with this dumbass. The two of you have destroyed a central pillar of our marriage. Our daughter could be spending Thanksgiving with you and Christmas with me. I want this fact to sink in. 
then tell him whatever the hell you want. She sat there quietly for a minute, then drew in a shuddering breath and opened the car door. As they walked up to the restaurant portion of the hotel, she made a move as if to grab his arm. He didn't pull away, but neither did he welcome her touch. They walked in, and there was a pretty auburn-haired girl standing behind a small kiosk. Welcome to TGI Fridays. Are there two in your party? She asked. He was about to respond when his wife spoke up. We are supposed to meet someone here. They have already been seated, she said very businesslike. Oh, okay. Feel free to look around, the hostess replied. He didn't know what the guy looked like, so he followed his wife's lead. She elbowed him gently and nodded to the back of the restaurant. There was a man sitting at the back of the restaurant, close to the door entering the hotel. It looked like he was doing something with his phone. She walked with a determined step toward the table. She stopped and didn't bother sitting down. He looked up and saw her and gave a big grin. It took him a second to realize that she was with the guy behind her. When he noticed him, his grin slipped and his eyes narrowed a bit. Look, this is my husband, Robert Morgan. He has concerns about our relationship, and after talking to him, I have to agree. For the first time in our marriage, I have given my husband reason to doubt my fidelity. I will be working hard to repair the breach of trust I caused by my relationship with you. From this point on, I want nothing to do with you. You have no reason to call me, text me, or otherwise try to communicate with me. I acknowledge my part in letting our relationship get to this point. Now I choose to end it. My husband knows about my reprehensible actions at the Red Horse Saloon. I will be doing everything I can to save my relationship with my husband, including informing HR first thing tomorrow about the entire situation. I will tell them that any attempt to talk to me about anything not directly related to our work will be considered unwanted attention. Now I am going to sit at the bar while my husband has a chat with you. As she turned away, she planted a huge kiss right on him before he could react. She looked into his eyes for a second. I am so sorry, she whispered. He couldn't help but check out her bum as she walked over to the bar. That went better than expected. As he slid into the booth across from the disconcerted playboy, he couldn't help but size him up a bit. Dark hair, thin build, and dressed to perfection. He guessed he would be considered attractive, but he had never been good at looking at guys. He was probably about as tall as him, although it was tough to tell because he was seated. He couldn't help but notice that the guy kept glancing at the glass of wine that was sitting across the table from him. This almost confirmed his suspicions. This was the time to play it cool. He knew roughly what he wanted to have happen, but he was having to make some of this up as he went along. Thinking on his feet was not one of his strengths. And here you thought that your surprise was her in a bikini, he said with a half smile. You really think she told you everything, he replied with a smirk. Now that this sucker was in front of him, he felt calm. This was a problem he could handle. Actually, I do. I have known that woman for ten years and have been married to her for eight I think I have a better handle on her than some pretty boy who has been taking a run at her for three months. He kept the smile on his face. The waiter came by and asked for his drink order. He ordered a double Johnny Walker Black on the rocks. She gives a great blow job, he said, still trying to smirk. He glanced at the glass of wine he had ordered for her again. Yes, she does. He gave him a full smile this time but I don't think you were talking from experience. You want pictures? He asked, half laughing. This guy was trying to get under his skin. He realized he should be reaching across the bar for him. But instead, he ended up chuckling. You don't have pictures. If she had gone that far with you, there would be no need for you to spike her drink. What are wannabe molesters using these days? GHB, Rohitnol or just good old X. He was working on a hunch, but his shocked look removed all doubt. He shrank back as he leaned across the table from him. Now he was pissed. You little son of a witch. I should kick the crap out of you right here and now. 
but I am not sure I wouldn't kill you. I don't need to go to jail right now. I gave my wife three choices, and I am now giving you three choices. He put one finger under his nose. One, you go bye-bye. You go and apologize to my wife now, and quit your job tomorrow. I promise not to come after you, then you leave town. He raised another finger. Two, you go to the cops and admit to spiking my wife's drink, serve your sentence, and leave my wife alone. I will be watching you, but I won't come after you, then you leave town. He raised the third finger. Three, I sign us up for boxing classes. In four weeks, you and I step into the ring. Personal injury waivers will be signed, and neither one of us leaves until they are unconscious. And when you wake up, you still leave my wife alone. Then you leave town. The waiter dropped off his scotch just as he finished up. He took a long drink and appreciated the burn. Time to get back to cool. You must think I am an idiot. Why would I go along with any of those options? He sneered. He gave him what he hoped was a menacing grin. Because you don't want to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your miserable existence. Every time you walk to your car in the dark, you will wonder if me or one of my friends will be waiting with a ball bat to crush your knees and stomp on your balls. Every time you go to open your door at home, you won't know if I or one of my friends is going to jump in and tie you to a chair and cut off your balls. Every time you go out to a bar, you won't know if me or one of my buddies is going to slip something in your drink and arrange for some backdoor loving, then stomp your balls. You wouldn't do any of that. You're a teddy bear. At least that's what your wife told me after I got done screwing her the other night. His face was gaining some color back. He took another sip of his scotch. He reached into his pocket and hit the button that started the voice record function on his phone. Hopefully, it would pick these next few sentences of dialogue up. He really should have planned this better. You were planning on drugging and assaulting my wife tonight, scum sucker. Are you willing to bet a lifetime of pain and suffering that I wouldn't do exactly what I said? It was time to go fishing. The drugs were just to get her in the mood for when I brought my friends over. We were going to make her airtight tonight. His cool evaporated. He was able to grab his collar with his left hand and haul him toward him. He couldn't get much power behind the punch with his right fist because he was sitting down, but he did hear a satisfying crunch and felt his nose give. You scum sucker, I am going to call the cops, he shrieked as he held his nose. Go for it, ass hat. I would love for them to test the remaining wine in that glass for drugs and then listen to the recording I have of you admitting to it, he shouted. Within ten minutes, the cops were investigating the disturbance. Apparently, two state troopers were taking a lunch break at the subway across the street. They took my statement and bagged the remaining wine and wine glass for testing. They searched Luke and found a packet of white powder. He asked for a lawyer and refused to say anything else. They listened to my recording and took my cell phone as evidence. It was difficult, but you could just make out Luke talking about the drugs and the plan. It was almost four in the morning before Sharon and I were able to leave the police station after she was done giving her statement. One of the cops spent almost fifteen minutes telling her what a great guy I was and how I had saved her from a drug-induced assault. She was a basket case by the end of it all. Luke stayed in police custody. We were able to use her cell phone to give a quick explanation to my parents. They were understanding and promised to take care of Casey. They decided to take her to the zoo. She was going to love that. After pulling in the garage and shutting the car off, both of us just looked at each other. She unbuckled her seatbelt and gave me a hug over the console. I let her cry into my shoulder for about a minute, then pushed her gently away. Sharon, we still need to talk but it is late and we need to go to bed. Tomorrow we are both calling into work and spending the day together to figure out how to move forward. Sound like a plan. Yes, Bob. Bed sounds wonderful. She replied in a small voice. She asked, Can I please sleep in the bed with you? Of course, Patty. I woke up the next morning spooned up to my woman. 
I thought about how we got to where we were last night and felt that things might be able to be okay. We still had a couple of conversations to go before I would commit to anything. We grabbed breakfast at IHOP and chattered about Grace and the fun she and my parents must be having. We managed to keep everything nice and light. After a final cup of coffee, we paid the bill and headed home. We sat down at the kitchen table and looked at each other. Okay, I guess I will start this, I said. I think you can see what a bad person Luke is now, so I am not going to beat that dead horse. He said you gave a good job and that you called me a teddy bear after screwing him a few days ago. Is any of that true? No, the farthest I went with him was that awful night at the Red Horse. I understand how bad my actions were that night, but it never went any farther than that, she replied. How can you make me believe that? You lied about going to see him last night, and you lied by omission about that night at the bar and your entire relationship with him. I felt it was time to get all the cards on the table. I have been racking my brain trying to figure that one out, and I think I might have something. What about a polymer test? She asked. Polymer test? Did she mean polygraph? I had to smile a little bit. You mean a polygraph test? A lie detector test? She nodded her head. Yes, make an appointment and ask me any questions you want. Just tell me the time and the place. The sincere look on her face was so adorable. I know that those tests are not 100% accurate, but I would feel a lot better if she came up telling the truth. I will see what I can do. It might take some time to get it set up, but that is a good idea, actually more than I would have thought. I replied. She smiled. Okay, that is a good start, and we will revisit the extent of your affair later. I guess my next question is the biggest one. This is the one that hurts me the most and the one that has the biggest impact on our relationship. How do we go forward? You being ashamed and not telling me about the panty incident I can understand. I don't like it, but I can understand it. I have a tough time dealing with the fact that you got real close with another guy without telling me. But if you thought it was just a work friendship, I can kind of see that. What I can't understand and what makes me want to just walk away before I get hurt again is when you told me you were going out with the girls and you were going to meet him for dinner. A 100% direct lie. Forget about the consequences. You broke my heart when you told me you were going out with the girls. I know my eyes were watering. I couldn't help it. Bob, all I can do is tell you my mindset at the time. First, let me say that I am so sorry for lying to you about everything. When you took this project for the first time since we have been together, I felt like I was in second place. I am not blaming you or your work. I know why you took it and why it was so important to you. I am just telling you how I felt. I started feeling down, and then Vicky's sister said something I couldn't get out of my head. She said to look for romance someplace else. I never took that to mean that I should cheat on you. I took it to mean that while you were preoccupied with this project, it would be okay to find what I was looking for somewhere else. Enter Luke. I didn't realize it fully, but he was filling the desire I had to be special. He asked me about my day. He asked me about my kid and family. We talked about hobbies I thought were cool. Basically, when we were talking, it was about me. She took a breath and studied my face for a reaction. I don't think I gave her one. When Vicky took me to task for how it looked at lunchtime, I realized what I was doing. I was using Luke to get what I felt I couldn't get from you. And honestly, I did cool it off. At the time, I thought he was just being a friend, but I wanted to get things right with you. The night that things got crazy, I didn't invite him or his friends. I got there early and they showed up before the rest of the girls. Luke was buying drinks for everyone, including me. I ended up getting as drunk as I have been since we have been together. I did some stupid and shameful things, of which you are aware, but then we had some pretty mind-blowing sex, and that confused me even more. How could I be such a 304 without you there, and then have it turn out to be so wonderful with you later? She got up and grabbed a glass of water. After drinking half of it, 
She sat back down and continued. Then came damage control. I knew you would be pissed about what I did, and rightfully so. If you got drunk and kissed another woman on a dance floor, I would go for your balls. I even knew it would be worse because we had such a hot session afterwards. You would wonder if I was thinking of something or someone else. So, I made another one of my many mistakes. I tried to use my friend Luke to help cover it up, and supposedly he did. He made sure I knew about it. So here I am owing a favor to my friend who only wants to take me to dinner on a night that my usual friends are unable to make. I am still lonely, because I don't think you are going to be home until late. So in a moment of stupidity I screwed up. And I am so sorry. Our relationship has always been based on trust in each other. I screwed up. Tears were running down her face at this point, even though she wasn't sobbing. Hell. I thought. I got up and gave her a hug. I put a long kiss on her, pulling away. I had to say something. We aren't there yet, and it is going to take a bit, but if you are in 100%, so am I. Sharon and I went to counseling for a little bit. Talking out my issues helped me get over them. The big takeaway for me was that just because communication was a strong point when we first got together, we still had to work on it. The counselor also suggested Sharon get tested for hormonal imbalance. 31 years old was a bit early to worry about it, but not unheard of. And after a few tests and changing her birth control, she felt better. Unfortunately, I can't say that we are back to where we were, but we are back to good. The polygraph test showed her to be truthful about all the difficult questions I asked. As for the little nagging in my head about the veracity of those tests, well, I can live with that. I did actually sign up for boxing lessons. Sharon got interested in self-defense classes being taught there, and Thursday Girls Bar Night became Thursday Girls Self-Defense Night. Sharon decided to sign us up for martial arts classes. She is a natural, and I can barely hang with her. Sparring together is the best foreplay we have found. The project came in six weeks ahead of schedule and under budget. My company is now playing with the big boys when it comes to government contracts. They tried to move me to a vice presidency position, and I turned it down because it required too much travel. Instead, I basically created a special projects division, and now head that. It came with a new office and executive assistant. My new executive assistant has the nicest bum and a megawatt smile. So far, no one has complained about me and my wife working together. As long as we make money, I don't think anyone will. Most of the $38,000 bonus for my initial project went into the college fund for Casey. However, I kept enough out for an all-inclusive resort week with my wife. My parents were actually ready to give my daughter back when we got home. I got a misdemeanor assault charge for punching Luke. The best 300 bucks and 40 hours of community service I have ever spent. Luke got three to five years for attempted assault and possession of a controlled substance. The white powder was GHB. He also got the crap kicked out of him when he was walking to his car at night. No, it wasn't me. Apparently, Luke had done the date assault drug trick before, and one of his victim's brothers caught up with him. The guy got two to three years for felony assault. I put fifty bucks a month in his prison commissary account. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.